This episode is supported by Prudential. Here in Tambopata, Peru, E.O. Wilson once found more species of ant in a single tree than there are in all of the British Isles. And scientists have seen this pattern all over the world. More species exist near the tropics. Why is that? In one night here in the Peruvian rainforest, I saw more insects in an hour than I've seen in my entire life total. It's not just insects, birds, mammals, plants. Regions like this, tropical rainforests, are some of the most biodiverse places on Earth. It's not just the abundance of it, it's how many different species we find in a given area. But why is that? It might seem obvious, or even like a silly question, but the more you think about it, the weirder it gets. Because life has shown that it can succeed pretty much anywhere, from the top of the highest mountains to the bottom of the ocean. Yet Earth's most biodiverse places are always in regions like this tropical rainforests. One reason why is maps lie to us. Rectangular projections are distortions of a sphere that make the poles look bigger and the tropics smaller than they really are, when in reality the tropics contain about 40% of area on Earth. And unsurprisingly, larger areas usually have more species. In less than half a square kilometer in the Amazon, we can find as many tree species as we'd find in 4 million square kilometers of temperate forest. Species here are at a higher density. There must be something special about tropical ecosystems. Climate is one factor. When we look at plant fossils and when and where we find them in Earth's climate history, tropical forests are just older than temperate forests. They've had more time to get rich. But just because the tropics don't have cold winters and they survived the last ice age doesn't mean that it's easy to survive here. There's dry and wet seasons, you have to compete for resources, and no matter what kind of organism you are, there's a lot of stuff out here that wants to eat you. Nope, not, nope, moving on. On average, the tropics are warm and they get plenty of water. This part of the planet gets more average solar radiation throughout the year, which means that plants and all of the animals that they support get more energy, they're more productive. But that still only explains why there's more life, not why there's more different kinds of life. If you have a pie, more people can get a slice if you cut it into a thousand tiny pieces versus just a few. In an ecosystem, we call these slices niches. It's the conditions and habitat that an organism needs to flourish. And here in the rainforest, there's a lot of slices. Organisms that live at higher latitudes have to be a little more adaptable, be able to handle more different conditions. One week, it might be snowing. The next, flowers and fish everywhere. Specialization is too risky. You've got to be adaptable. Life is more stable in the tropics. One thing I've noticed since being in Peru is the sun sets a lot earlier this time of year than what I'm used to back at home. Here near the equator, there's essentially the same number of hours of day and night no matter what month it is. Let's say you're a bird that eats insects and maybe these bats over here. You've got the same number of hours to do your feeding. The birds get the day shift, the bats get the night shift. You get to split that niche evenly. That wouldn't work at higher latitudes in more temperate climates. There's simply just too much change, too much disruption for these species to keep track of. And this might explain a reason why more species coexist near the equator. The tropics are crowded, so competition for resources is extreme. That competition drives organisms to specialize, like how we see ants or caterpillars that might be able to live on just one single type of plant. But because climate and seasons are more stable, that specialization isn't as risky. More species, less area. Those theories do a really good job of explaining why there's so many species in the tropics now, but that's only half our story. We're missing the beginning. Where did all of these species come from? Well, it's possible that evolution is actually working on overdrive here near the equator. That speciation, the creation of new species by various natural forces, actually happens faster near the equator. Each generation of living things gathers changes, mutations. Some are good, some are bad, and some are neither. But it's not until those mutations are passed on to the next generation that natural selection and time can do their thing. 
The reason that bacteria are so good at adapting is because they reproduce quickly. They have more generations in less time. The same thing happens here in the rainforest. Plants and animals grow up faster. They can have more generations. This drives competition. This is what forces plants and animals to specialize in all of the amazing ways that we've seen. Now, this theory that evolution happens faster near the equator finally ties together the ideas of time and area and energy to explain the origin of biodiversity. There's an idea that says that the tropics are so well suited to the creation of new species that it's like an engine for biodiversity. There's another idea that says these places are so productive for the plants and animals that live there. The climate is so stable that species don't go extinct as fast. More species are born here and species live longer here. The tropics are like a cradle and a museum. Scientists even think that over many, many years, species from places like this go and seed biodiversity throughout the rest of the world. This is why it's so important to protect the rainforest, to preserve life's cradle and museum, to keep it from being cut up, because more area means more species, to keep the climate from changing, to keep this place stable and rich. Chemists know all the elements of the periodic table. Physicists probably know all the subatomic particles that make up matter. But biology still hasn't answered one of its most basic questions. How much life is there? E.O. Wilson once wrote that unlike the rest of science, the study of biodiversity has a time limit. If species begin to go extinct faster than we can describe them, then we might never know how much life that Earth has to offer. And after seeing something like this, I don't want to see that happen. Stay curious. Thanks to Prudential for sponsoring this episode. The time between when people think they should start saving for retirement and when they actually do is known as the action gap. According to a recent survey conducted by Prudential, the average American starts saving for retirement seven years later than they think is best. That could cost you $410,676 in your lifetime. I did that in my head. Another Prudential study found that one in three Americans is not saving enough for their retirement. You can go to raceforretirement.com and see how the action gap affects you. I hope you enjoyed the first video from our trip to the Peruvian Amazon. I should add that when it comes to explaining why there's more species near the equator, scientists aren't totally sure what the right answer is yet. But these are the best theories we have right now. Remember, that's how science works. We've got to keep studying them, which means we've got to make sure the species we want to study are still around. I'll have lots more videos from Peru in the coming months, so stay tuned. A special thank you to Rainforest Expeditions for hosting us in Peru. It was an incredible experience, and we cannot wait to share with you the rest of our Peruvian adventures.